the challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserve law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge and justice ruled triumphant. Sergeant Preston was on his way to headquarters in Dawson City, when he was hailed by a young boy, about 12. Hey, Sergeant Preston, wait a minute. Well, hello there, Bob. Hello, Sergeant. Gee, I'm glad to see you. I wanted to talk to you, but you haven't been in Dawson for a long time. <laughs> hello, King. I've been on a long Arctic patrol, Bob. How are you? Oh, I'm all right, but the black has been stolen. Your pet bear? Well, when did this happen? Pretty near a month ago. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. We found his chain file. Someone took him one night. Oh, that's a mean thing to do. Why would anyone steal a pet bear? He's just about full size by now, isn't he? Mm-hmm. He's awful big, but he was tame and... Gosh, I miss him. He was very friendly. Remember how he and King used to play together when they were both little? Yes, Bob. That was a strange friendship. They always liked each other. Blackie never liked dogs. King was the only one. Well, Bob, I'll keep my eyes open for him. Maybe I can pick up some information about him somewhere. Gee, Sergeant, I knew you'd help me. He's so much bigger than when you saw him last, you might not recognize him. But you can always tell him by that funny white spot over one eye, remember? Yes, I remember that. I think I'll know Blackie if I see him. Gosh, I hope you find him. I'll do my best, Bob. See you later. Bye, Sergeant, and thanks. Come in, King. Oh, hello, Preston. How are you, Inspector? Oh, and there's King. Well, your trip north was very successful. Yes, sir, we were lucky. I hope you don't need too long a rest. I have another job for you. Well, I don't need any rest, sir. What is it? Well, while you were away, Sergeant, the Indians down around Whitehorse have been stirring up trouble. Well, that's unusual. They've been so peaceful. Well, someone's been selling them liquor. That's the only time we ever have any trouble with them. Have they done much damage? Well, they raided Pierre Ledoux's trading post. Before they do any more harm, I want you to get down there and stop it. Find the man who's selling them liquor and bring him in. Just outside of Whitehorse, a big covered wagon stood in the center of a clearing. Huge letters on the side of it read, Beaver Bill, buy beaver oil, the magic medicine. Near the wagon stood Beaver Bill himself, a wicked grin on his face as he teased a big black bear that was chained to a stake. The poor beast was bewildered and angry as Bill flicked at it with a long whip. The man was so preoccupied with his vicious cruelty that he failed to notice a young Indian who had come quietly on moccasin feet and stood watching. <laughs> come on, you lazy cow. This will teach you not to be a lap dog. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. Get your temper out. <laughs> yeah, you're getting quick. Don't you wish the chain was longer and you'd get at me, huh? <laughs> oh, you tease bear like that. Where'd you come from? Me come from Indian village. Chief White Feather, him my father. Well, you tell your father them last furs to give me was poor quality. You want the liquor, you better bring gold or good furs. Me not tell him. Me come tell you not sell more fire water to Indian. Tribe all sick. No food, no blanket. All money go for fire water. So you're taking it on yourself to tell me what to do, eh? Huh? Just because you're the chief's son don't mean you're running the tribe. For me. Now get out of here before I bash your stupid head in. White Eagle had just returned to the Indian village when he saw Sergeant Preston pull up before the chief's lodge. Hello, King. Hello, Husky. Hello, White Eagle. Sergeant Preston. How? I hear your tribe's had a little trouble around Whitehorse. I want to see your father. Is he here? Chief, him sick. All brave sick. Sick, eh? Where is he, here? See him sleep. No can talk. Yeah, you're right. He's dead to the world. What's this beside him? That 
Medicine. Medicine, eh? What's it say? Beaver oil. Where'd you get this? Man in white horse. Sell. Well, this isn't medicine. It's bad whiskey. Who sold this to your father? Chief, my father say not tell. Well, I don't like to ask you to disobey your father. But he thought harm might come to the tribe if you told. Now, if you're going to be chief someday, you must learn to use your own judgment. It'll be better for your people if you work with me. Yes, you're right. My people cold, hungry. All furs gone, all gold gone. Braves too sick to hunt. Yeah, that's what we must stop. Bad man with bear sell fire water. Take all gold, all furs. A man with a bear, you say? Him put fire water in medicine bottle. Sell to my people for gold and fur. You mean he puts liquor in the bottles that he sells the Indians and has medicine in the bottles he sells to white men? Uh. Who is the man? Him call Beaver Bill. Him put on show, white horse, tonight. White Eagle, this is what I want you to do for me. I want you to buy some fire water tonight. White Eagle not want fire water. I don't mean I want you to drink it. Here, uh, here's a sack of gold dust. You buy it and keep it for me, and I'll get it from you later. When Sergeant Preston entered Pierre Ledoux's trading post in Whitehorse, he found Pierre alone. Oh, Sergeant Preston, so glad I am to see you. I have wired your headquarters in Dawson. Well, looks as though someone did a lot of damage in here. The Indians. Somewhere they get liquor, smash my door, steal and spoil my stock. They come at night. Me, I sleep in cabin. Wake too late. Yeah, this is bad. How much damage they do, Pierre? Uh, one, maybe $2,000 worth of goods destroyed. You make them pay, yes? Well, I could arrest them, but that wouldn't get your goods back for you. They've nothing left in their village. Not even anything to eat. They can't possibly pay you. Sacre bleu! What I do? Where'd they get this liquor? I believe I know where they got it. In fact, you're advertising the peddler right here in the store. This handbill tucked on the wall. You mean that man sell beaver medicine? Him with black bear? It's all right. Oh, me. I am so stupid. Each night I go watch him. And right beneath my nose he does this. Tell me about this bear he has with him. What's he do with it? That bear, he's big, ugly one. Last night he almost killed two dog. It says on this handbill that he'll give $5,000 to the owner of any dog that will stay in the ring with his bear for five minutes. Have you seen any dog, Strat? Certainly. No dog can do it unless he is dead dog. Then Beaver Bill not pay. He uses the bear to attract the crowd and then sells his medicine, is that it? No. No, that medicine he sell first. People who buy get close to ring to watch fight. Me, I get three bottles. Oh, I see. What's this bear look like, Pierre? Uh, he's big black one. Funny thing, he has white spot over one eye. Oh. This I have never seen on any bear before. A white spot over one eye, you say? Well, Pierre, I think I see a way to get your money back. I'm putting King in the ring with that bear tonight. Oh, Sergeant, no, 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 no. That bear, he hate all dog. King, he is big and strong, yes, but... Don't but worry about bear... King, Pierre. And if I were you, I'd make a little side bet with Beaver Bill. If you want to win, bet on King. <laughs> Most of the people of Whitehorse were gathered before the platform at the back of Beaver Bill's wagon in a clearing. Nearby, in a pit about ten feet square, the big bear blinked at the torches that were set at each end and growled at the teasing faces that bent above it. Beaver Bill's voice rose above the noise of the crowd. Beaver oil, ladies and gentlemen. It cures lumbago, commonly known as backache. Cures toothache, sprains, cramps in the stomach, aching joints, and dog bites. Give it to the children for measles, whooping cough, pneumonia, chillblains. <laughs> Here it is, folks, the magic cure-all. Only two dollars a bottle. Rub it in, sprinkle it on, or take it internally to soothe your drooping spirits. All right, folks, show me your money. The more bottles you buy, the closer you get to the bear pit to see the fun that's coming. This way, folks. <laughs> we want beaver oil for tribe. Well, that eagle. Father wants more magic medicine, eh? I guess he spanked you and sent you here because you was too big for your britches, eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> 
<laughs> My compliments to the chief. <laughs> Next, you, mister. I'll take two. Uh, here you are. Uh, how many bottles? Step this way. Me buy medicine. Good way to go. Is it liquor? Get fire water. Me pay him gold. Fine. Now stay away from me until after the show. I'll call you when I want it. Anybody else want beaver oil? We all bought your bottles of magic medicine. All right. Now we're ready for the big show. Who's going to try for the $5,000 prize tonight? Any dog that stays in the pit for five minutes wins it. Any tickets? I'll try for that prize, Beaver Bill. Sergeant, don't you do it. No, don't put King in that pit. Hey, not King, Sergeant. You don't know that bear. Well, about the end. We certainly aren't into that, folks. That's a big dog. It should be good entertainment. Sergeant, please, I ask you once more, please do not do it. King, he will get killed. How about Frenchy? Stay out of this. Ain't none of your business. I'll take a chance, Pierre. All ready, folks. Now get around. Don't get inside the ropes. And with the most bottles, gets first choice of places. All right, King. In there, boy. The crowd grew silent. Tense with excitement as the big dog approached the edge of the bear pit. The huge bear raised his head and swung it slowly from side to side, growling a warning. The hair on King's back bristled, and with an answering growl, he leaped into the pit. The bear started toward him, then paused, seemingly puzzled and uncertain. Both animals sniffed the air. Then King whined softly, and the bear, who had half risen on his haunches, came down on all fours. Slowly, the animals approached one another. Will you look at that? They not fight. Hey, what's the matter with you, yellow piece of bear meat? Go after him. Why, they're a touch of noses. They like each other. Look. Look, they're playing. They're glad to see each other. Well, Beaver Bill, looks as though you're going to pay off. I'll show them mangy yellow cowards. I'll make them fight. Here, you give me that dog whip. Drop that whip or I'll break every bone in your body. Now hand over that 5000 It ain't fair. I won't pay it. Maybe Beaver Bill would like to go in pit with bear and dog. We throw him in, boys, eh? Yeah, yeah, Come on, throw him in! No, 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 I'll pay, I'll pay, don't I? Let him go, boys. Wait, Eagle. Here, me here. Give me one of those bottles. Beaver Bill, you're under arrest for selling liquor to the Indians. I have the evidence right here. The next morning, in Pierre Ledoux's store, Sergeant Preston laid a sack of gold on the counter as he talked to Pierre and White Eagle. Well, there you are. This will take care of the damage the Indians did to your store, Pierre. But, Sergeant, that $5,000, it, it belonged to you and King. We aren't allowed to accept prizes of money. We were on duty. But so much money... After you take what's owed you, use the rest to buy supplies for White Eagle's tribe. Food enough for the winter and anything else they need. Sergeant Preston, you real friend, my people. You come, stay with tribe, be guest. Maybe someday, White Eagle. King and I must be on our way. A small boy is very impatient to see his pet bear. That's right, fella. We have a prisoner and also your old friend Blackie to take back to Dawson. <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hal Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>